Some things in life are more dependable than others. Uh, the sky is always blue. Uh, there will always be construction in Wisconsin from the months of April to November. Uh, cheese is good, beer is better, and Barrelcraft Spirits has always been cast strength. Uh, those are the things that I've always been able to depend on. They've never changed. They've always, you know, they've always been consistent. But until today, one of those things is changing and it's not beer or cheese. So we must be talking about barrel craft spirits. Uh, today, we're talking about foundation. All right, so barrel craft spirits is an interesting company. They're a non-distilling producer. They always have been, and I think that they always will be. Uh, they, they make their name by buying cool barrels from other people. They blend them. They create their own releases. They occasionally do single barrels, finishes, all that cool stuff. They've done seagrass, one of my favorite products ever, a rare 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, but the thing that was always consistent across all of those things was that I thought they were delicious and they were always cast strength. So when talking and writing a review, you usually have to go and research some details. Uh, but when I was writing reviews of Barrelcraft Spirits, I always knew that they'd be cast strength. So that was an easy detail to include. Uh, so you can imagine how shocked I was to get an email from Barrelcraft Spirits mentioning that they were releasing Foundation, a new whiskey, uh, at 100 proof. It's interesting because 100 proof is a totally fine proof. I talk about all the time, I like whiskey at 50 to 55% uh, ABV. So that's 100 to 110 proof. I don't need it to be 65%. I don't need it to be hazmat. I like my scotch at 48 to like 55%. I'm pretty easy to please when it comes to proof. Uh, so it's interesting to see that Barrelcraft Spirits is changing up their game, not because I'm I'm a proof hound, but because cast strength is an easy way to say, hey, we haven't messed with this whiskey other than, you know, finishing it and blending it and all this stuff. It is truly, you know, it's up to you if you want to dilute it. And this takes that decision away from the drinker. Uh, and I don't think it's entirely a bad, a bad decision at all. So uh, Foundation is a new whiskey. And this is a five-year-old whiskey. I forget, it's a blend of Kentucky and uh, Indiana, Tennessee and Maryland. Uh, the blend components are an eight-year-old Kentucky, five, six, and nine-year uh, Indiana product, uh, eight-year-old Tennessee, and five- and six-year-old Maryland bourbon for a drived mash bill. Uh, so basically all the ingredients blended together uh, equals 73% corn, 23% rye, and 4% malted barley. So I think a lot of people uh, will probably have strong opinions about the, the lack of the cast strength on this guy. And I think it's an interesting product, but I don't think it's a bad product. So here's the rub for the release for me. So a lot of times uh, I love to make cocktails with premium ingredients. I have a lot of bottles here at the house. It's kind of cool. It's just a perk of the job. Like I have a lot of good whiskey. So if I feel like making a cocktail with something expensive or strong or different or hard to find, uh, there's really no one to come after me. But the real problem is if I go to a bar and I ask for a barrel batch 35 old fashioned, that sucker is gonna run me like 25 bucks because it's a it's a fairly uh, solid neat pour at like 15 to 18 bucks I'd have to guess and then you go and put in a cocktail which is a few extra dollars and suddenly you're looking at a $25 old-fashioned now obviously that makes it a little bit hard because a lot of people who aren't whiskey enthusiasts like us use bars to find whiskey right like they might have an old-fashioned and say this is incredible what's in it and it's an opportunity for the bartender uh, to tell a person hey you know I made it with Rittenhouse rye or I made it with Evan Williams bottled and bond or you know I made it with any Knob Creek small batch bourbon what any other brand Brand, right and then that puts the brand in that person's head but when you're a company like Barrelcraft Spirits that opportunity never presents itself because no one's simply uh, going to walk in off the street and say you know I want a $30 old-fashioned or a $25 old-fashioned or even a $20 old-fashioned if you're in the Midwest like me where booze is cheap and so a brand like Barrel really needs a product like this in order to live on what we call the rail, right? Or if it live on the back bar is another phrase you hear. And what that means is for a bar to stock a whiskey that makes sense in the price range and be successful, uh, sometimes you have to abandon your roots a little bit and uh, take, you know, take the nut and crack it a little bit different way. This release is five years old. It's a blend of five and nine year whiskey. So everywhere between five and nine from four different states, there's a lot going into it. It's much less expensive. I want to say it's like 54 or $59. It's probably going to depend on your market. What that means is that this is a new way for people to find barrel and I think that that's commendable. Stellum was an interesting product by barrel. I don't want to call it a flop. It was super successful. In fact, it was almost too successful to be sustainable. But in this case, Stellum wasn't going to take consumers and push them towards barrel anyways. And so therefore we have a new whiskey. And you know, I'm not just going to talk about it. We're going to drink about it as well. Uh, you can see that I've been mulling this bottle over, forming my own opinions, trying to decide what angle I wanted to take this because, you know, truly just sitting down and giving five tasting notes or 10 tasting notes or 12 tasting notes and then battling you guys in the comments uh, isn't always the most interesting 
way to make whiskey content. Sure, I could post to Twitter and I could just ask questions like what say ye, uh, but I think it's more interesting to make more interesting content. So today we're talking about rails. Bars exist because they sell lots of cocktails. Uh, the margin on cocktails is great. The margin on beer is great. The margin on wine is great. The margin on food is okay. And so brands, if they want to be successful, they can either fight it out in the liquor store in which hoping, you know, if you sell a case a week, uh, you're having an incredible week. But if you put a signature cocktail on a menu at a restaurant, uh, you can fly through product even quicker. That's because it, it garners public attention. If you have six cocktails, people are gonna be uh, you know, ordering those over and over and over. And so bars are a really excellent way for brands to gather new attention from consumers and maybe not reinforce love from existing consumers, but to get new eyes on a product. So it's really important that a whiskey brand get whiskey in bars because it's a good place for people to try it. It's just like going to a whiskey festival, right? You see something you've never had, you wanna give it a go. If this is 55 bucks, you're probably getting a pour for like eight to 13 based on your city. I'll say it's cheap in the Midwest. If you're in New York City, it's gonna be totally different. And also it doesn't make it prohibitive to say, hey, we're making a barrel foundation old fashioned and it just lives in the cocktail menu with everything else. That's a lot of the uh, psychology around the value of getting on back bars. And that's exactly why this product exists. It also so the, the, the group of people, we call it a market segment, right? Like the slice of the pie of people who want to spend up to $60 is gigantic compared to the slice of people who want to spend $60 to $100. Or for those premium barrel releases, $150 to $250 or $300 to $500. So uh, having a product at a lower price tier gives people a place to start. Now I understand uh, you say that you can still make it five years old in cast strength, yes, but also 100 proof is great. It allows us to just slide right into where anything bottled and bond would be. It's gonna be a little bit of an upcharge due to the price, uh, but 100 proof is perfect for cocktailing. Uh, making an old fashioned with barrel proof whiskey is a little bit of work if you're used to just kind of regular spec. Uh, spec is just like the recipe. So a restaurant has a spec. They have the recipe of how they make their old fashions. If they're all at 100 proof, it makes it easy to mix and match products. Boom, bam, done. That's all there is to be said about that. I don't think barrel, a lot of people have been like, oh, there's a crisis at barrel. We're like, oh my God, like, you know, what's going on? These people are, are giving up everything. I think adding a new product at 100 proof is totally fine. So with that, how is the whiskey itself? The nose, big fruity fun, it's bold. Uh, there's a lot of caramel, I wanna say like a toffee and pecan. This uh, this doesn't have a lot of that Tennessee minerality. This has some really nice like doughiness, like some like fresh baked bread, some caramel, some toffee, some like almost a little bit of apple butter. Pretty pleasant on the nose, it's, it's well structured. It's, it's like a bourbon plus, so it's got a lot of those big like caramel, vanilla, gingerbread notes, but also it has a lot of fruit and a little bit of spice and I like that breadiness as well. On the palate, the palate's fun. The palate, the 100 proof really sets nicely. I'm used to these like really kicking you in the face because they're high proof. And this is soft and easy to drink. This is heavy on butter and pecan. This is a lot of toffee. There's cinnamon. There's like kind of a brown butter. I really like it. I'm gonna do a couple more tastings on this, even though I am through the bottle. This isn't a first take. Before I finish up the review, there's, with so many components, there's a lot to dig through. That said, I have already made a couple of old fashions and those worked awesome. So if you like old fashions, this is a pretty easy bruiser to make if, if you're okay putting $55 whiskey in an old fashioned. The finish is long, it's nutty, it's like got a, got a creme brulee and a peanut brittle note with a big apple butter. Really kind of traditional dessert notes. A nice, pleasant oak. There's a good bit of fruitiness with that apple butter, but it's kind of on the savory side. It's not like a big cherry. There's no like peach, mango, tropical fruit. There's no like esterification and stuff like that. In sum, I gotta say, Barrel did send me this bottle. Uh, so this was free. They don't get to see this video. We haven't really talked about it. They. Uh, they do a good job of basically when they have something new, it shows up at my house and I decide whether or not I want to talk about it or drink it or whatever. Uh, there's no uh, no money changed hands or anything. They did send me this whiskey so I could drink about it. And I also decided that it was worth a YouTube video because I know a lot of people are asking like, WTF, are you doing barrel? And I think uh, five years old, 100 proof, perfect introductory whiskey. I think this is something uh, that actually opens up my opportunity to show more people about barrel. Cause like if I have relatives come over, I'm not gonna typically pour them a 66% ABV single barrel that I think is awesome because quite frankly, it'll just knock their head off. Really nice introductory whiskey here. We'll call it the gateway whiskey. Uh, maybe like a perfect segue. That said, if you like whiskey, if you love bottle and bond stuff, if you're not afraid of whiskey at 50% ABV, uh, super solid. So I'd pick one of these up. I honestly, uh, may do an old fashioned contest around this. Maybe we'll do the first annual Whiskey Raiders old fashioned contest. So if you make a, pick your favorite 50% ABV whiskey, make your favorite old fashioned, and we'll see who comes on top. In short, good whiskey, 55 bucks, uh, five years old, 100 proof. Uh, nice work to barrel. This had to be 
a lot of work to put together with the amount of components that are in there, uh, but it drinks great. And I'm gonna go make another old fashioned before I have to catch a plane later. So uh, that's all for today, guys. Thanks for dropping by the Whiskey Raiders YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, drop me a like and a subscribe, please. It would help as we're building out the channel. Uh, and uh, yeah, in the meantime, go ahead and check out the channel for other reviews. You can find us on the web at whiskeyraiders.com. The full review will live there as well. And until the next time, guys, I'm Jay, better known as Take, and I will catch you here on the channel for the next video soon. Thank <laughs> you.